Hello, Mr. Claudia here. Today we are going to be learning about higher order derivatives, which sounds scary, but is actually a pretty easy concept. A higher order derivative just means to take the derivative of the derivative, or the derivative of that derivative. So we'll start, so far we've learned about the first derivative. This is f prime at x, or you might write it as dy dx, those two notations we've been learning. Now, if you take the derivative of that, we'd call it f double prime at x. Or, this is kind of weird, d squared y over dx squared. Uh, and you could continue, right? You could find the third derivative, or d cubed y over dx cubed. So, I'm just going to draw a box around that, so we kind of note that as an important concept for the day. And just a note about this, like where this comes from, because it can be a little kind of odd to think about. But essentially, uh, the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So it's this is an operator. Take the derivative of dy dx. So then you have to think about it. You have d twice. So you have d squared y. And then you have dx twice, so you have dx squared. So that's kind of where that notation comes from. And it's a notation, it's not a fraction. So this is a notation, it's not a fraction. Okay, so in practice, check it out. The f this is a function, what's the first derivative? Well, f prime at x, I just apply my derivative rules. I have 6x squared minus 10x plus 3. The second derivative is the derivative of that. So the second derivative is 12x minus 10. And the third derivative is the derivative of that, which is 12. And technically, we could keep going. Like, we could find the fourth derivative. It's very rare that you would ever look at something past the third derivative, but we could continue and we would write it like this, f to the four, or f fourth derivative is equal to, in this case, zero. But we're, you know, it's very rare that you would do that. One interesting thing to note about the derivative is every time you take a derivative, the degree of the polynomial decreases by one. So this is a cubic or third, or third order uh, function. When you take the derivative, it becomes a, a quadratic or second degree. And then if you take a derivative again, it's linear. And then another derivative, it's, um, it's a constant. So you can think about the derivative almost as a descent, uh, decreasing in degree each time. Now, we're not really going to get too much into this. We're going to save a lot of our uh, more advanced uh, derivative work for um, when we come back to this in grade 12. But, like, just thinking about it, like, what is the second derivative? Well, this function, 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2, uh, looks something like this. Let me see if I can draw it. I graphed it earlier. It peaks around here and then comes down here. It looks something like that. So this is f at x equals 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. And uh, the, uh, so the first derivative, if I go down a step, the first derivative, well, one, we can almost draw it ourselves. Like, I know that this point, the tangent line is 0, right? the slope of the tangent is zero, and at this point, the slope of the tangent is zero. So that means if I'm drawing my derivative, this would correspond to a point where the derivative is zero. And this would correspond to another point where the derivative, or the slope of the tangent, is zero. And if I were to graph this uh, function, uh, the der first derivative, it actually is a parabola that lines up with those points. That's the first derivative, and it equals to 6x squared minus 10x plus 3. So this kind of is a neat little point, that f, x, f prime at x equals 0 corresponds to the max min points of f at x. And uh, so what is the second derivative? Well, 
if I take this curve, the derivative, and I look at the points where the slope here is zero, that's going to correspond to the second derivative um, uh, being equal to zero. And if I were to draw it, it's 12x minus 10. It's actually going to be this line like this. So that's the second derivative. Now, here's the neat thing. And again, oops, sorry, you can't see any of that. Uh, here's the neat thing about uh, this kind of relationship, and we're going to return to it in grade 12 in a chapter called Curve Sketching. The second derivative, where it's equal to zero, corresponds to these max min points on my graph. What about the second derivative? Where the second derivative equals zero, this corresponds to, if I go all the way up, this corresponds to this point here. And you might think, what's that? Why do I care about this point? Well, this is the point where the curve uh, inflects or it kind of bends. This whole time the curve is kind of facing downward, it's a curve opening downward, but at this point it inflects and now all of a sudden the curve is facing upward. So that's the significance of the second derivative. Just make a quick note, again we're going to do a whole chapter on this in grade 12 so I don't want you to get too bothered by it, but just to give you a little preview of where we're going, uh, the second derivative equals zero corresponds to the point on f at x where the graph inflects. We call it actually a point of inflection. Uh, we could say it inflects from a frown to a smile. Okay, wow, really gotta practice with this. There we go. So uh, let's turn the page though. Uh, so we're not going to be doing this. This is just giving you a preview. This lesson is really just about taking the first, second, third derivative. Let's turn our, uh, to the next page. And here, uh, another thing we're going to be doing in grade 12 is we're going to be talking about motion uh, and looking at how the derivatives are related. So this is um, a position time graph. And you can see, like, say this is a ball uh, or a car, and as time goes on, you can see that its uh, its position or its distance from a starting point gets further and further and further. That's kind of a parabolic shape. This is the velocity time graph for that same car, which tells you the speed or the the speed uh, that the vehicle is going. So you can see its uh, speed is starting at zero and it's going faster and faster and faster. Finally, this is an acceleration. Acceleration time graph. The acceleration is a measure of how fast the velocity is changing. So you can see that there's a constant acceleration. The car is getting faster at the um, by the same rate every second. We're going to do a whole thing on this in grade 12, but again as a preview, if your position time graph uh, um, well, usually I'll just write it like uh, s as a function of time. So position, or this should be s. Uh, we usually use s to measure position. So s as a, f as a function of time. Well, uh, velocity as a function of time is just the derivative of position. And acceleration as a function of time is the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of uh, of position. In physics, you're going to learn this uh, set of formulas that kind of govern this function or this motion, but it all comes from calculus. If you know the position, a, a, a curve to describe the position of something over it with respect to time, if you take the derivative of that, it'll tell you the velocity. If you take the derivative of that, or the second derivative, you'll find the acceleration. Anyways, that's just a little preview. Let's do some math. Uh, okay, I have a function. Find the second derivative at x equals 1 for this function. Okay, so first of all, I don't like the way this function is written. I'm going to rewrite it as y equals 5x squared plus x to the half. It's a little bit cleaner. Now I'm going to find the derivative, dy dx. So to do that, I bring the 2 down. I got 10x. And here I have half x, and I subtract 1 from the exponent, so I end up with negative half. Uh, oh, I need the second derivative now. Well, we can see how this is going to get really ugly real fast, because the second derivative um, now I have two terms to deal with. What's the derivative of 10, or sorry, now I have um, some difficult fractions to deal with in my exponent. If I take the derivative of 10x, that's just 10. 
And if I take the derivative here, oof, that's a little tricky. Let me just look at the half. Ne let me leave the half out of this. Let me just take the derivative of x to the negative half. Negative half is going to come down, x, and I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent. So subtract 2 over 2, so that gives me negative 3 over 2, like that. And now I can clean up my answer. This is going to be 10 minus plus, so minus 1 over 4. And actually, I should put this in the denominator. Great, so there's my expression for the second derivative for any x value. Now I want to find the second derivative when x is equal to 1. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to sub in x equals 1. Actually, you want to see the way I would write this? I would write d squared y dx squared and I put this line in x equals 1. That's kind of a nice way of showing sub in x equals 1. So I have 10 minus 1 over 4, 1 to the power of 3 over 2. That gives me 10 minus, well this is just 1, so I end up with 10 minus 1 fourth. Um, this is essentially 40 over 4, right? If I multiply top and bottom by 4, I get 40 over 4 minus 1 fourth, so I end up with 39 over 4. Neato. Second derivative. It's just a derivative of derivative. Uh, here's another one. Find the second derivative at x equals 1 if this is the um, original function. Um, oh my god, look at this look at this derivative. Well, let's see if we can figure it out. The first derivative is, hmm, this is going to be a chain rule issue because I have a function within the function. So I'm going to do the outside function. Bring down the 10, write down the inside function, subtract 1, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the interior function, which is negative 2x. So I'm just going to underline that and remind you about chain rule favorite thing. And let me just clean this up a little bit. I have negative 2 times 10, so I end up with negative 20x. And I have 2 minus x squared to the power of 9. Now, I need to take the derivative of this. Well, look at what this situation is. I have one function here, first function. I have another function here, second function. So unfortunately, to take the derivative of this derivative, it's going to be hard. I have to use the chain rule. So here we go. Second derivative is equal to the derivative of the first thing, which is negative 20, times the second thing, 2 minus x squared to the power of 9, uh, plus the first thing, times the derivative of the second thing. So I have 9 times, bring that down. 2 minus x squared to the power of 8. And then don't forget chain rule. I have to take the interior a function derivative again. So I have negative 2x. So chain rule of a chain rule. Uh, and now I just have to clean this up a little bit. Actually, I don't even really need to clean it up. I need to sub in x equals 1. But I'll do a little bit of cleanup just to make that step easier. But really, I don't care for a nice answer. I just need the numerical value when x equals 1. Uh, but I'll do a little bit of work just to make that next step a bit easier. Because here, all these things are being multiplied together. So like there's, they're all being multiplied. So I have 20 times 9, uh, which is 180, times 2, so that's 360. It's a negative times a negative, so it's positive 360. I have x times x, x squared, and then I have 2 minus x squared to the power of 8. Well, that's a pretty good answer. I could factor something out, but again, I'm not really interested in a clean answer. I just want to know what happens when x is equal to 1. So I'm going to sub in 1. And just make sure you do order of operations. So we have negative 20. I have 2 minus 1, which is just 1 to the power of 9, plus 30, 360. 1 squared is just 1. 2 minus 1 squared is just 1 to the power of 8. So I really end up with negative 20 plus 360. So that just gives me 340. So second derivative, things can get tough really quickly. Um, unfortunately, we only needed to find the specific value. Uh, we will just finish with kind of an interesting, cool math uh, um, 
math, math or math example, or a math -er example, uh, let's find the third derivative of this function. So watch what happens when there's an e in there. It's kind of a neat thing that happens. Let's take the first derivative. That is going to be, okay, so the four doesn't get touched. The derivative of e to the something is e to the something times the derivative of the interior function, or the something in this case, which is just two. So I end up with two times four, so that's eight e to the two x. And I'll just underline this again to remind us that this is chain rule. Now the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, this is going to be, uh, okay, so I'll leave the eight. The derivative of e to the something is e to the something times the derivative of the interior function, which is just 2. So I end up with 16e to the 2x. And if I want to find the third derivative, d cubed y dx cubed, similar strategy, I'm going to have 16e to the 2x times 2, which gives me 32e to the 2x. It's kind of neat how, in, you know, in a mathy way, how uh, each time you take the derivative, because there's an, the e to the, the natural exponential function has the same derivative, it keeps coming back, but you see that the coefficient changes each time. You have this doubling of the coefficient, which is sort of neat. Um, anyways, that's kind of a cool pattern if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, our homework then, it's pretty straightforward. It's just taking the derivative of the derivative. Uh, it's page 221, number 1 to 10. Now I will just make a little note. This is something we're going to uh, cover at the end of this course. But if you see n with an exclamation mark, n. Uh, this is n factorial, which is really n times the previous number, times the previous number before that, times et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A more practical example is, for, is say, 5 factorial. 5. This is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's actually a really large number. Uh, this sort of thing we're going to deal with at the end of this course, the grade 11 course, but you might need it for one of the homework questions, one of these kind of cool pattern type questions. Uh, good luck with that, and we'll see you next time.